Hello everyone, welcome back to Momentos de Tecnología, Technology Moments. In this opportunity, we're going to talk about the Unified Cloud Key Generation 1, a very cool device that lets you handle and manage your network without the use of a computer or a controller installed in a Windows or Mac computer. It provides you with 802.3 AF power input. Uh, it has an SD card slot, a micro USB power, very convenient for backups. Uh, it, is a, it has a powerful processor and it is very compact in order for you to put it into your rack. The Unify Cloud Key in this opportunity, uh, even though there's already a generation two, we have, we have decided to work first with the generation one. We had been previously working with a controller installed in a computer. We're going to use a power over ethernet switch. We're going to just put this on hold and we're going just to use the power supplied by the power over ethernet switch. These two devices are very cool, very convenient, but in our case, it, they are not necessary, okay? Let's unpack our device and you're going to find these instructions that are very detailed and very precise, by the way. Mm, you have the Unify Cloud Key, the power cable or the patch cord, little patch, co patch cord, and uh, the SD card. Very convenient for backups, as we said. This one is the input for the, for the power over Ethernet, if you want, or you can use the Type-C connector. In this case, it's Type-C. We forgot to tell you that. Uh, the latest generation one devices only have Type-C power supply input in the back. Uh, we're going to insert um, this little SD card. Um, it's a little bit, it just sticks out a little bit. But there's no problem with this one you can use it to plug it into any port of your power over ethernet switch in case you want to use it that way and once you power your e power over ethernet switch it will immediately start powering on the LED starts blinking white which is something that you want to pay attention to because once it is adopted by your device or has been previously configured sorry this one is the ones that adopt the, the rest. This the little LED is going to turn blue. This one is the access point that we're going to use in order to uh, plug uh, to be configured for our network. In this case, an AC Pro, uh, an AC Pro uh, access point. We're going to use a mesh. Mm, I do not recommend it so much. Our experience has not been. Uh, very great with these devices. It has a huge antenna, a huge like area that is going to help you with the signal reception. Mm, but our experience, okay, it has still has to be proven otherwise. Right here, we're going to open up um, a device that we are just testing, which is the Unify AC Mesh. Also, another cool device that is going to let you retransmit your Wi-Fi. Uh, this one has a 24 volt uh, power adapter. You have to be very careful with, with that. Mm, this one, as I was saying, is a device that is going to retransmit your Wi-Fi over hundreds of yards if you see fit. Right here, mm, we're going to connect it to the power supply and it's going to be powered by the, by the power supplies that comes with the device. Uh, it also comes with this uh, couple of antennas that you have to connect on the top and the ideal uh, location of these antennas is at the, at, the, at the top of the device in a 40 degree uh, angle. This one has a little level in case that you want to be very careful with the appearance of, your, of the installation of the device. Uh, you can also have this one in case that you want to install it uh, by a pipe or something like that and this one on a wall. Uh, it has the two holes that are going to just fit in the device. Okay, so uh, moving on forward on our explanation, this is the setup that we're going to have. We are also going to have the Mesh and the Mesh Pro that are going to retransmit uh, Wi-Fi to other locations. In the computer, we're going to um, we're going to browse to unify.ubnt.com. That is going to take you to the website of Unify of UBNT, Ubiquiti Networks, and you're going to uh, log in with your username and password, uh, or if you want, you can create very quickly an account. Once you log in, we're going to, well, bypass the security questions, of course. Mm, we're going to see that it has a demo that I would recommend that you look around a little bit, and we're going to click here, Discover Cloud Key. It is going to ask you if you want to add this extension to Google Chrome. You are going to add it, and you're going to um, enable this add-on 
from the panel of Google Chrome it is if it asks you to. It might be necessary to uh, click again on it and right here you have to click on scan. Okay. It might be a good idea if you have trouble uh, to turn your firewall off, close Google Chrome and restart it in order to log in again, log back in and clicking right here in Discover Cloud Key. In our experience, the device was not being found. It was not being found, so we had to reset it to factory defaults. It was something that was on the device. The problem was on the device and not on, uh, on my browser on my or on my computer. Once we reset the, the device, the Unify Cloud Key Generation 1, we just clicked here and the device appeared in our network. So it was a very simple process, but for some reason it was not working because of the device. It says that the device needed an upgrade, uh, so we're going to take the time to do it. It says that it takes about a couple minutes, but in our in our case, it did not take us uh, this much. It took a lot uh, a lot longer, even though we had a pretty a pretty decent internet connection. You're going to wait for the device to boot, and in a couple minutes, it will. Right here, we see it uh, in fast forward so in a few moments it turned blue and then restarted back again so it can take the changes for the for the update that it had so we just waited a little bit it reboots and it is going to be right now when it asks you if you want to to re-adopt this device not re-adopt actually it is adopting it for the first time only that the first time it asks you to it asks you to uh, upgrade the firmware, which is uh, being updated very, very often. Something very positive, as, as you may understand, as uh, many security breaches uh, may be found in time. So you have to be very careful with the updates of the firmwares of your devices. Right here, it says that the firmware has been updated successfully. And now we're going to click here on Adopt and we're going to follow these instructions we have to go and browse for this uh, web address with the port specified as you can um, now be logged in to your device and it's going to be the setup process the country the location if you want to enable the backup uh, right here is going to find the two devices but i'm not going to add them right now uh, so we just leave them unchecked and we are going to click on next we are going to configure our wireless network, the name, um, and we're going to choose a wireless key. In this case, a very simple one, so you don't uh, uh, you don't mess up. Okay, so you, you have to be very careful not forgetting uh, key uh, passwords or keywords because you may need them later. Right here, we're going to just um, enter the the information that you're going to use to log in to specifically this device. The device authentication is something that you have to be very careful with and I might recommend you that you change this password and you use a password that you know and use frequently if you want to connect to the through the secure shell um, to these devices. Okay, so let's click next. Uh, we just leave the automatically optimized the network. This one is like a summary, uh, we click OK and then it is going to ask you for your ubnt.com account credentials. This is something very important uh, because right here you are enabling cloud access to your device. Once you open it is going to show you uh, a two option window if you log on to the device without the, without the port. But right here we are like in our summary page where you can see all your cloud keys. Okay. So it is very important to have this in your um, in your bookmarks. Okay, let's close this. This one is my dashboard uh, where you have all the information about the internet capacity, gateway switches, APs, clients, and the guests that are connected to your to your wireless network. We're going to click on access points, and we see that we have not adopted yet these two. These are my APs. Right here, uh, it would appear switches, voice over IP devices, and, and switches if there were. We're going to adopt them both. 
This one is the schema that we're going to use. We have the cloud access, we have the power over Ethernet switch, we have the cloud key generation one, we have a mesh, an AC AP, and a couple AC mesh devices that are going to just re-extend our uh, Wi-Fi network indefinitely. Um, right here we're going to upgrade them, adopt and upgrade our, our devices and you're going to see that the APs are going to uh, flash around a little bit and both are going to be updated to the latest version of the firmware. Once the devices have been updated they are going to start blinking again in the white LED and then it is going to turn blue. Okay, once the utility has uh, finished downloading and upgrading it is going to start provisioning both devices. What is provisioning for, for the Unify uh, controller? Provisioning means sending all the parameters to all the devices so they can work without the controller in case that there is a power failure or they don't find the controller. So they are going to have the information about the network, they are going to have the information about uh, the security, the uh, users, groups of users, uh, upload and download limits and all that. The only thing that it is not going to have the information about is the, in case that you have a guest network active or if you have a portal for authentication. Mm, these are the two devices that have been that have been found by the controller. Right here, this third one is the one that is being found because these two first have been already been adopted and they are discovering other devices on the network. So we are going to adopt it and it is going to be adopted wirelessly. That means that the device is going to be connected wirelessly to the mesh device or the one that it finds uh, automatically with the strongest signaling and is going to actually regenerate that signal for many more meters. Okay, so right here we're going to wait until it, uh, it is updated and starts provisioning. As you can see right here, a process that takes about two to three minutes. If you don't want to wait, you can just press F5 and it will reload this uh, page. You can configure right here the name of the devices, which is something that I recommend you to do when you have them on top of the table. You don't want to do this when they are already running and on a wall in a very high ceiling or something like that. So you just click uh, on them, you go to the configuration tab and you press the, a the alias for this, for this AP in this case. So you're going to be able to have everything very organized once you want to use the map. The map is something that you might want to have very handy if you want to be very organized. Right here we're going to put the map name, the image, we're going to load it. We're going to select, specifically I recommend using PNGs or JPGs, and we're going to uh, set the scale. Scale is something very useful in case that you want to use like the heat map of the coverage that comes with the controller. Right here we're going to set uh, 50 meter distance from corner to corner. So we just press here, 50, set the scale, and we're done. Now what we have to do is search for the devices and place them on top of, the, of your map. Remember that we are starting this network from zero. We didn't have anything connected, we didn't have anything running. Maybe the, 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 the network points where you're going to connect them. Right here you place the AC which has a very high density users. The, the Mesh Pro is going to be in the lobby and the AC Mesh is going to regenerate um, the signal of the Mesh Pro in to the um, to the outer areas of this uh, location. We can click here to make the simulation of the coverage of your devices, which you can enhance if you want by drawing walls, because as you may know, the walls are going to be an obstacle that your Wi-Fi signals are going to have to go through or bounce off. Uh, right here we have our devices and there is only one thing left to do. Make sure which one is the signal that is going to pick, in, to pick up the, the, this access point if it is connected to, the, to number one or number two, the one that is in the lobby on, or in the main room. So we're going to check it and as it says right here, it is linked to the lobby one. It is not linked to the lobby one, it is uh, actually linked to the main room. So we might want to change that by clicking here, manually configure the app links. Uh, right here is the second option. And in the top, right here is where you have to put it. Right here is where you want to put um, or select 
the uplink that is going to have that AP. Okay? Very important because you might have a lot of trouble if it is trying to boost a signal that is very poor um, uh, by default. So this one is the one that is going to be in the exterior. Now it has been provisioning and it is going to pick up the signal from the one in the lobby, that is the, uh, uh, the AP mesh. And as you can see here in our scheme, it is going to um, pick up a signal from the lobby and regenerate it indefinitely in the outer areas of your location or your premises. Right here in configuration, you can also check the wireless uplink uh, that it has and check it back. So it is actually regenerating a signal that in this case, it is showing a 99% because it is just uh, sitting one by the other one. Good. So here you see the link speed, which is a very pretty, a pretty good one. Mm, and we're going to tell you about our experience with this setup. Uh, because this is all this is something that you can also do with the regular access points the AC uh, pro the AC um, the AC uh, AP can also regenerate signal from other um, from other access points okay guys thank you very much for watching this video uh, I hope you liked it uh, remember that we do not have any commercial links with the brands that we manage right here we are just sharing our experience with technology and sharing it with you so you can take advantage of your time thank you very much and see you next time